This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> Hello there, welcome to Art Attack. Now, don't worry, I'm not practicing a new dance routine. I'm printing my own personalised stationery by putting my footprint onto envelopes. It's great fun to do, and when it's dry, you can just write right across the envelope, like that, and use it to send off your letters. Now, personalised stationery with your own design on it can cost anything up to £100 if you go to a printer's. So what I do is I get some cheap paper and envelopes and I print my own. Now, of course, the writing paper that goes with those footprint envelopes has got to be hand-printed. Now, to do this, I'm using ordinary poster paint, or you can use powder paint. And when it's dry, it looks something like this. You can write right across it and I think it gives it a very professional finish. Another way to print your own stationery is to use cardboard cutouts. Now, I've got a cardboard cutout here of a fish shape. I've got my initial. I've got a house, that's always a good one. I've got a heart and a straightforward square. Now, what you need to do is get about 10 centimetres of sellotape, fold it back on itself like that, sticky side out, slip it onto your finger, and you can then use it to pick up one of your cardboard shapes into the paint, and again, just picking it up very carefully, you can use that to print with. And the good thing about cardboard printing is it gives this brilliant textured finish. Look at that. And I've done all of these just by using cardboard. Of course, you can experiment. There's many different ways that you can do it. What about using the wrong end of a felt-tip pen? All right, well, let's try this out. A bit of red there. Print onto there, onto the envelope, and into the top corner. Squidge that one a bit more there. And then another colour, I think, maybe green. Try a print there, a print on the envelope. You can always go back for more paint if you need it, which I do. <laughs> and in the corner. And then another technique is just using fingertips. Uh, yellow, I think. One, two, three, just about there, just smudge that around, there it is. And then get the thin black felt tip pen, just draw some string, there it is, and there, aye aye, what's that? Okay, that's a little one in the distance, up top there, and there you have your own personalised stationery with balloons blowing in the wind. I suppose you could call it... Airmail. Hey, that looks really good. And it's only painted cardboard shapes on plain old, boring old paper and envelopes. You have a go. Keep your designs nice and simple. Or you'll have to write very short letters.
Nice. Oh, by the way, um, if you do have a go at one of those, make sure you clear up afterwards. How do you make your cartoons make a noise? Cartoon sound effects. Now, we all know that to make a cartoon character speak, you put his words inside a speech bubble. But when you put words outside of a speech bubble, they become sound effects. Now, there are loads of different types of sound effects you can try. Quiet noises. And there are large, chunky ones for the louder noises. And for the louder noise, you can always put a jagged edge around it. I always think it makes it look <laughs> even louder. What about for long, drawn-out noises? Well, make it long and drawn out. And for shorter noises, make your word shorter. What about noises that get louder? I just simply make the letters bigger. There it is. So it all depends what type of sound you're looking for, whether it's long or short, quiet or loud, and put some cartoon sound effects into your cartoons. Now here's a, a cartoon comic strip that I've been drawing, and I want to put some sound effects into it. So there's our hero. He's walking home one night, and what's he doing? He's got a musical note in there. He's just whistling. It's a good sound effect, that. From the castle on top of the hill, he suddenly hears a cry for help. help. It's a very long cry, long word. He runs up to the castle, pushes open the old oak door slowly. <laughs> Spooky noises like that. So it's good to do the words wobbly. When he got inside the castle, everything was very dark. Suddenly, it was a very loud and chunky crash of thunder and a bit of lightning. Yes. Everything was still and dark, and from the corner of the room, he heard. <laughs> well, don't know how to spell that, so I'm just going to put again. Wobbly, spooky lines there, going up and down. He'd peered into the darkness. He couldn't see anything. Suddenly, there was a puff of smoke. For those muffled noises, it's always good to put, put your word in a cloud of dust and then have some gust marks coming out the side, like that. Standing there in front of him, in a weird sort of light, was a ghost making most awful noises. Now I'm going to put some dribble marks in here and that will help the sound effect. Look at that. Not very nice at all. Our hero leapt at the ghost and they both fell to the floor with rather a loud bang. So again, big chunky loud noise. And sometimes the noise is so loud, it fills the frame and goes over the edge. If there are two noises, a bang and crash, and put them both in the frame. When the lights went on, our hero was standing there holding a white sheet, underneath which were two of his mates, laughing their heads off. It had all been a rather sick joke. His mates laughed. <laughs> louder. <laughs> and louder. <laughs> and even louder. Look at that. And what did our hero think of this? Well, it's totally unrepeatable. Try it yourself. Put some sound effects into your cartoons. <laughs> Leave it out, will you? I'm trying to sleep.
My name is Joseph and I had an art attack with sand and glue. Hello, my name is Joshua and I had an art attack with hole punch confetti. Hello, my name is Darren and I had an art attack with glue and glitter. Great art attack from Sherwood Park School. Draw a picture onto some paper or card and paint it, not with paint, but with glue. Now, I'm using PVA glue here, but you can use any glue that you can lay your sticky hands on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just painting the glue right up to the edge of my pencil marks. Now, you don't have to paint the glue on. You can squeeze it straight from the bottle if you've got a steady hand. Let's see how steady my hands are. OK, I'm just keeping to my pencil line. Going all the way around there. Ah, oh, not so bad. Doesn't matter if you're a bit wobbly, because it will tidy up in a minute. There it goes. On the last strip of there, doesn't matter, because again, that will tidy up. And while it's still wet, I'm going to use some glitter. Now, watch this. Just chuck the glitter on. Now, this is the bit where you don't have to be neat and tidy. Just chuck it on as long as it covers the glue. There you are, a bit of silver. Now, I think we need a bit of blue for up here. Now, I'm using different colours here. I've strategically worked out where they should go beforehand. But again, don't have to be too neat. I do with this bit there, a little bit of flesh glitter. Now, where did I get flesh glitter from, I hear you say? Well, I mixed it, I say. It's simply gold glitter, silver glitter and red. If you want the skin a bit darker, just put some blue in. All the way down there. It reminds me of an eruption from a glitter volcano. There we go. A little bit more. Fresh colour in the bottom there, two little blobs, and just chuck on some red there. There it is, completed. Just make sure all the glue is covered with glitter, and then put it to one side, let it dry, and let the glue soak up all the glitter. And then the good bit. You simply tip it and shake, and shake, and shake, and shake. And there it is, a glitter picture. Try it yourself. Get your fingers sticky and give yourself a glue and glitter attack. I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!